one of the reasons I'm in this at all, and one of the reasons I, you know, I'm sort of a free agent, I could spend my time doing other stuff, is that I used to work uh, basically for the other side. Uh, my job in the old days was to try and sell clients on the merits of a controlled and discriminatory internet. So I worked in Silicon Valley, and our devices were designed to control what kind of content went over the internet and at what speeds. That's what we were trying to sell. We called it sort of the value added or the, the quality of service or we had another of names for this um, you know, service-based internet. But the basic idea was to try and assert more control over one over pipes and to charge money, you know, to try and give companies the power to charge money to differentially charge things, block things, whatever they wanted. So I used to work and my job was to tell everybody how great this stuff was. But our biggest client, and the one that had the most interest of all, was the Chinese government. And there was a pretty clear reason. They were absolutely interested in technologies that allowed them to control the internet a lot better. You know, the Chinese government looked at this internet and they wanted the economic benefits, but they didn't want any of the sort of total freedom of speech that came with it. In the United States, we have a different kind of issue. We don't ex have a communist government, but we do have a possibility and a threat of private censorship. And I want to emphasize that these technologies, filtering, monitoring, inspection, deep packet inspection, are exactly the same technologies that are the technologies of censorship. Now AT&T and Comcast want to use them for different reasons. They want to use them for commercial advantage. They want to use them to disadvantage uh, services they don't like and favor their own services. But I'm suggesting, first of all, it is a small step from censorship for commercial advantage to censorship for other reasons. And if we do not want to have an infrastructure of speech control in this country, it is important that we stand up and guarantee that the channels of free speech stay open. And that's, I think, the first reason Congress needs to be involved in these issues.